Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? Yeah, it's your boy, Matt Diazabal. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming on by. I am here talking about some more music I've discovered, and today I am talking about the band, or the solo group act called Sightseeing Crew, with their debut album, Let the Dead Stock Breathe. Sightseeing Crew is a solo music project based out of England. Uh, it started back in 2023 by a guy named Andrew, and he has been working on creating a avant-garde uh, style type of music that is based off of guitar-driven music, but that at the same time deconstructs and strips down modern, traditional song structures and notions of what music is. And he's been working on this project since 2023 and released it this year in 2024. And I've got to say, this is a very, very interesting project this man has created here with his concept and ideas of uh, non-traditional song structures. And I would love to break it down, what I thought about it, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And yeah, so let's get into this review. Sightseeing and Crew is living up to their name in terms of deconstructing musical traditions and structures with this album but I don't think it's going to be well received to the masses uh, because I think this project does a good job of breaking down these conventional ideas of song structures and ideas, uh, particularly on the songs Tape and Lick. Uh, they have no real traditional flow or structure to them, but I can see how a lot of people might be put off by this uh, lack of structure. I do want to give respects to this man trying to branch out and do something different and being very experimental with his uh, journey of making art. I will never disrespect that. That is an amazing and beautiful thing. But I will say, like, because of the lack of uh, traditional structures, the songs feel really messy and incoherent. And at times it just feels like two different songs layered on top of each other. And it just feels like a incoherent mess. Uh, particularly on the opening song tape, it's really hard to uh, follow the the flow and feel the song because so much is going on, especially towards the back end of the song. So I'm going to play a clip of that so you can get a feeling of what this uh, uh, art project is like. It's a bit all over the place in terms of different ideas being brought here that sound probably cool individually, but all together, mm, not so much. The jumps in volumes throughout this uh, album make it really hard to find a flow and structure to latch onto the project. And with the crazy amount of distorted instruments, it makes it really hard to, I guess, uh, make a connection and understand what's being made here. Because you can definitely feel like, yeah, it's music, it's art being made. Unless something went over my head, it's really hard to gravitate to what he's trying to convey in these uh, sounds and uh, this music space. Because it was really hard to just pay attention and follow along because so much is going on. I'll give him credit because he has some really ambitious ideas here with how he wants to play his the instruments that he's using. Like you get some really disjointed and... Uh, interesting uh, guitar riffs, some really funky and uh, like deep playing bass. And then you get some keyboard playing here that's really high pitched down all over the place. And like I said before, really good ideas that I think are just mushed together in a bad packaging. Another aspect about this album that kind of uh, throws things off besides the odd song structures is the length of some of these songs. Uh, they can range from six to eight minutes like the song your cue goes for eight minutes long and so you get long disjointed incoherent songs that just by the end of it you feel really exhausted mentally and physically because it's just you have to focus so hard on listening to this song and you know songs that are easy to listen to and not easy to listen those are fine however you want to listen to them but in this sense of trying to create a new type of music, it just makes it really hard for people to want to probably like really get uh, invested in it when it's just such like dragging out on some of these songs. 
oddly enough, uh, his shorter songs, like on Daybreak and Real Quick Fire, they actually are the most interesting songs because of the shorter runtime and him packaging that avant-garde style guitar playing and ambient sounds. It just feels really, really fleshed out and you can really connect with the songs. And ironically, these shorter songs have more of a structure to them, especially in terms of like how the drums are keeping the pace of the song. And the songs that are the most impressive things on this album are the ones that are most traditional in terms of having a structure and a proper flow to them. So I think it's really ironic. He's trying to break out of traditional norms, but when it's coming to traditional norm style songs, that's where he's flourishing. That's where he sounds the best. So I don't know if for future references, maybe he might need to stick with traditional uh, structures to be able to show off his ambitious ideas because these short songs, they just, they were really nice, especially after coming from such long songs, they are really pleasant and relaxing to listen to because they were not epic, long, disjointed, uh, dis, uh, disjointed songs. So I'm gonna play a clip of Real Quick Fire for you so you can get a sense of that ambiance and avant-garde style he's creating here. It's super simple, but it feels so effective because it's not uh, too disjointed and it's not long and exhausting. He is trying to do a lot here and trying to break the social norms when it comes to music. But I will say the socially acceptable music that he has here, like the piano and the groovy bass that he's playing and drums, he's really good at that, at creating those nice uh, sounds and playing traditional instruments. But I could see probably because he's been playing those for so long, he wants to break out and make more, um, I guess, uh, thought provoking and just more songs with feelings. It's just really rough with what he's trying to do here. And he still needs to progress in his uh, type of playing and just making his uh, vision come to tr uh, come, make his vision come forth because it's still a little rough. Like on Neutral Works, he's got some really good soothing drum playing here. And throughout the song, there's some like whale background sounds to create like a nice resting, relaxing feeling. And even though the song has some erratic moments in the drum, I mean, in the guitars and some of the synths being played, um, it just feels like he's able to shine in terms of like what he's really good at. And that's like the drums and the pianos on this particular song. And you can see the potential of what he's trying to do here, uh, what could be. And I think if he hones in on these skills in the future, his uh, releases could be a little bit more coherent and be able to break free of those traditional uh, music uh, norms. So I want to play a clip of Neutral Works so you can get a sense of that uh, soothing and chill drumming he's doing here. There's something here is just really rough with everything that's going on with the other erratic parts of the album. And I think another good example is like on the song Light Q, the second half of the song, it's an eight minute long song, but like the second half seems a little bit more coherent and like structured. And you can kind of really get a sense of that avant-garde star style that he's trying to create here. Uh, it just gets really bogged down by uh, unnecessary uh, erratic playing choices. And so I think as time goes long, along, he can fine tune his style and make things sound better and just create the vision that he's trying to make here, I think. And the other songs on this uh, album, like Lick, uh, very, very ambitious style playing here, but it gets really bogged down by just being a little disjointed and incoherent, it feels like. And the song's grand, has a really good overall feel, similar to, similar to Neutral Works, where it has a very somewhat cohesive uh, and uh, nice sound to it. And then you have the song Wary, which like goes back into more of that uh, erratic, ambitious playing here, but it's just too long and has a really messy structure. Uh, and so I think those, uh, the big 
things that bring this album down are just it's just too incoherent and too inconsistent a lot of the times and just runs for way too long so you just get really exhausted lastly what i'll talk about it is the production of the album i think it was self-produced by uh uh andrew from sightseeing crew the guy who runs this and i think just like always it's a new project i think he needs some more time to work on his production skills because the, the jump in volume throughout the uh album was very um not pleasant i could i can say and just the different levels and sounds being used here everything it doesn't sound mixed and uh, mastered very well the layering is really crazy but if this is a first time release under this uh, monarch and this band, there's time to grow, but it is very rough and hard to listen sonically. It's not enjoyable to listen, but there are moments where there are some like decent sounds that can be uh, appreciated and, uh, and loved. So yeah, Sightseeing Crew is here to try and break social norms when it comes to music and how art should be presented and i will always respect an artist a musician trying to do something different um, be different that is amazing it's never easy it's scary so kudos to uh andrew for attempting something like this no one can ever take that away from him and he can, he did an amazing job for doing something different uh unfortunately i think um it just wasn't executed well with all the different sounds and ambitious ideas and so I think that really hindered it and makes it a, not a very enjoyable experience to listen to. But it is cool that he tried to experiment and do something. So I would say this uh, debut from Sightseeing Crew is a decent to probably light 5.5 out of 10. A lot of great ideas here that just need to be fine-tuned and go, uh, go back to the drawing board, I think. So... Links down below, like, subscribe, tell me what you think about this album, what else I should check out. Uh, check out this video over here and thank you again for coming on by. I will see you later and like always, see you in the pit.